4.30 is your time and a good morning to you. We're reporting once again live this morning from Lee Highway as we approach almost one week after that deadly rampage began at this site. This morning we have new details including funeral arrangements of some of those fallen Marines and that sailor. Those details coming up next. I was at the courthouse at 11 o'clock this morning about to meet with a homicide detective when I saw him rush out of the building and run out. Didn't know what was going on. It was supposed to be about something else that we were going to talk about. Uh, saw him run out of the courthouse, speed away, and a couple minutes later find out he was responding to an active shooter situation. This is an officer involved shooting. It's very possible that officer is inside this hospital getting treated at this point, uh, which leads us to believe it's possible that Chief Fletcher will come to Erlanger Hospital. Now, Chief Fletcher was in Knoxville today for uh, some sort of gang meeting, I'm told, uh, though he is rushing back to the scene. It's about, you know, an hour, 45 minute trip from Knoxville, which means he should be arriving in Chattanooga just about any moment. Hey, Dan, hey, uh, this is Jed. Let me just tell you, uh, we hey, were told. Quick, can you I hear me, Dan? Point, guys. Oh, um, okay. He's already Yeah, gone. actually, this is Chief Fred Fletcher oh, just, just now arriving in. on the scene. Him. Like we said, he'd be arriving any minute. Uh, that is Nathan Vaughn, uh, also on the CPD command staff. Chief Fletcher giving a man a pat on the back. I can tell you from a police source who I just spoke with on the scene that their police officer who was involved in this shooting is said to be in stable condition. So to repeat, that Chattanooga police officer involved in this shooting situation in stable condition, according to one police officer. A Chattanooga police lieutenant was responsible for driving that police officer's family here to the scene at Erlanger Hospital. A lot of police are saying this is the worst accident they have ever seen in our area. Dan, good morning to you. No doubt it's difficult to reconstruct an accident like this, Jed. Not only is it on the interstate and cars traveling at high speeds, also involving tractor trailers. Uh, here we are eight hours almost uh, after this accident and police are still on the scene. I just watched them tow away. Actually, the best way to describe it is dislodged an SUV that was beneath the tractor trailer. That tractor trailer you see in the background and that car now sitting atop um, a record is just a mangled ball of metal. It's 12 hours later and the interstate remains closed and traffic is backing up. This is exit 11 at Udawa and uh, folks are still having to get off that exit. They were hoping to have this open up by rush hour, but the investigation is still ongoing. Yeah, here we are downtown at the corner of Broad Street and 4th. And like you said, just two blocks away is where our camera operator encountered this on his way into work this morning. The guy crossed the median, ran across the highway to get away from police and that pursuit ended here with the suspect on the ground and stun gun prongs coming out of his clothes. We caught it all on video. Let's start with the crash that happened around 345 this morning on US 27. If someone is raped, they don't always go to the police immediately. The experience is obviously very traumatic, but as long as that victim comes forward within four days, there can be enough evidence to make an arrest. You hear about the rape kit we talk about. Well, this is an example of one. This is the forensic testing inside. You open it up. It has some paperwork that all the nurses will fill out. It has some swabs and it holds other evidence like clothes or bed sheets, anything you want to send in. And everything in that box could be key to catching the rapist if the detective follows through. Gang related shootings are down on your watch. But is it also safe to say in light of this shooting that some people maybe aren't getting the VRI message and aren't taking it to heart, VRI, the Violence Reduction Initiative? Some people will never get any message, Dan. All right, I want to talk about diversity on the force. Uh, African Americans make up about 33% of the Chattanooga population. At CPD sworn officers, it's about 18%. Is there a goal percentage you want to hit, and how are you improving diversity? You guys were talking about uh, all the events that unfolded in Paris over the past few days. Sheer terror across the sea in France, and the president addressed that this afternoon. In fact, while he was on Air Force One on his way to the volunteer state, a lot of that was unfolding. It was something he couldn't ignore at Mississippi State Community College, and it's what he began his speech with. Let's head to Los Angeles, where Eyewitness News anchor Dan Kennedy has reaction to tonight's win. It was just seconds ago. Dan, fill us in. Oh, yeah. It just happened, and the excitement is real here in Los Angeles. It's actually one-two punch from East Tennessee. You have Jordan Smith uh, getting first place, but then you have Emily Ann Roberts from Knoxville coming in second. So a lot of people in Tennessee and the Volunteer State smiling big uh, this evening, but no one's smiling bigger than Jordan Smith. I was out here all day today speaking with people from five years old all the way to 70 years old as they laid down their, their American flags, their cards, their well wishes, and their flowers for those four Marines who lost their lives yesterday in Chattanooga. It's terrible that this has happened in Chattanooga.
A common sentiment shared by all. It's just a sad day for Chattanooga, but we'll be strong from it. And these poor people that go out here and with their heart and fight for us, and, and then they get shot right here on our soil. By the dozen, people place flowers, flags, and cards at the site where Thursday's rampage began. The ambulances and fire trucks everywhere. Daniel Peden was due for a job interview in that same complex, but he missed his turn and missed the shooting by minutes. By the grace, I just missed the turn to get in here, had to go down the road and turn around and come back, and uh, I believe that's what saved my life. As foot traffic picks up at the makeshift memorial, so too does the FBI's investigation. It's hard to ignore the half dozen agents photographing those bullet riddled doors. Do you consider this an act of terror? What I consider this is a brutal attack on our community against people because of the uniforms they wear. Police Chief Fred Fletcher hands the investigation off to federal agents, and he does so proud of his comrades in blue. I have never experienced this kind of heroism, this kind of courage, and this kind of selfless service. A selfless service remembered by even the smallest Marines. Flags and flowers. And amidst all the red, white, and blue, one Ringgold woman finds room for some purple ribbons. They all got a purple heart yesterday. I understand that one was already decorated purple, but the other ones became that yesterday. Channel 3 has uncovered numerous complaints against Sunset Memorial Gardens in Cleveland. They allege unmarked graves unbearable odors as well that resurface every summer. And families in Bradley County have limited options when it comes to local cemeteries. Tonight, investigative producer Beth Berger and reporter Dan Kennedy meet up with some families fed up with the conditions in which their loved ones are resting. And then when they come up here, the funeral experience is bad, you know, because this is their last thing they remember. Families use Sunset Memorial Gardens to say goodbye with the promise of always being able to come back to say hello. A cemetery really does handle a family forever. Ralph Buckner knows about death. He's a Cleveland funeral home director, but inside this mausoleum, it's personal. I personally paid for these. This is where he visits his parents and his daughter Shipley, who died five years ago, only 18 years old. <sighs> And you can see the water or whatever. It's just, it's pitiful. Buckner can't stand the smell during the summer. A state auditor last month said on a scale of 1 to 10, the odor was an 8.5, saying the smell of decomposing human remains has been here for at least three years. Sunset Memorial Gardens responded in August, saying it was working to control the odor with AC units, and these types of air fresheners you might use in your home or car. That's not proper ventilation for a mausoleum whatsoever. During our visit, we found gnats and spiders, water puddles, even the new flooring is bubbling up. Channel 3 reviewed hundreds of pages and inspection records and complaints filed over the last five years. One citation from 2012 notes body fluids on the floor. More recently this summer, the state found a leaking roof, stains, cracks, and mold, and a crypt plate that fell and broke on the floor. But the problems are not just in the mausoleum. Graves sunk in, piles of dirt everywhere, stones that have been chipped. Outside, Melanie Marshall buried her two boys, Jeremy and Jess. This is about the folks that we love, and they've got names, and they've got faces. Lots of times, the family of people who are buried in a cemetery just sort of suffer in silence. Like many in Bradley County, District Attorney Steve Crump has parents buried at Sunset Memorial Gardens. He's taking legal action in hopes of getting people like Ralph Buckner a quick, but this time permanent, fix. Yeah, we've got to do something. You know, not just for my aspect, for my family, but for the citizens of Cleveland and Bradley County. The cemetery owners first told the district attorney back in January in a written agreement they would better maintain the cemetery. The DA says they failed to do that. Now the county is taking the cemetery owners to Chancery Court. No date has been set, but we'll continue following this story. In the studio, I'm Dan Kennedy for Three Investigates. The state of Tennessee has fined Sunset Memorial Gardens more than $50,000 since 2010. We contacted the owners requesting a comment, but they chose not to respond.